of all, we thank you, Lord, for our blessing. We thank you, Father, for giving us a wonderful father to raise us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a wonderful mother to raise us. Father, right now, we just look, ask you to look down and bless us in our memory of Mark Clark. Mark was a wonderful brother, a dedicated soldier. And we ask that you recognize him for his accomplishments. We ask, Father, that you put in all of our hearts the desire to keep the spirit of Mark Clark alive. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Chicago with Edward Hanrahan, this attorney, state's attorney. Yes, I remember, I remember very well. Because that was my friend back then. We were all friends. You know, and to hear that he had gotten shot and killed like that, I was like, wow, Mark, you know, oh yes. It was devastating. It was, it was devastating because knowing that I was so close to him and in the involvement, the been involvement, and, and, and uh, knowing that the mindset that he had that it wasn't no fear when it comes to death. He talked about death and he didn't fear that. So, you know, I, I hate that, the way that that took place and then it happened. It still affected me, you know. He was the head of our party here. He was a teacher, visionary, like I said, the great loss. We all knew, though, what we were doing. And what could happen, what would probably happen. You know, we were prepared to die. When I heard about them uh, getting killed up in Chicago, it, it, it hurt, you know, because it always hurts when you know someone, you know, no matter what they're doing. Uh, we thought they were doing a good work, you know, uh, as far as with the children and everything. But, you know, other people have different ideals on that. But uh, he was a part of Peoria and he left his mark in Peoria. My mother, and I were living in Flint, Michigan, when we found out that Mark had been murdered. We were still grieving the death of my grandmother and my father. And now we had to grieve the death of our brother Mark. I remember I was there when my mother got a phone call from my brother James. She wasn't notified by the authorities that Mark had been killed. They found out because it came across the TV and the radio. And James had heard about it and he had called Mama. I remember her moaning. She just began to moan. A deep, gut-wrenching moan. And finally, the words came out, they killed Mark. They killed my son. My parents attended the same church, and that's how I met Mark. He was preacher's kids. Oh, we just have fun. We always play together, Mark and uh, Russells and Taylors, you know, Heidelberg boys. And we, and we used to just have fun together. We were just a bunch of kids around the church, you know, having fun and I mean, hope, waiting to get grown one day so we have to go to church, you know. Mark was always a happy go lucky guy, you know, he was always joking. But fun, he was, he was a fun guy to be around. One of my fondest memory of Mark was when I was younger. I was in the car with him, he put me in the front, riding with a 
few of his friends. And they was in the back smoking. So I covered my mouth. And they was laughing. So Mike looked at me and told me, I'm really proud of you. Don't do what other people do. Do what you feel like. Growing up with Mark was interesting because Mark was a no-nonsense kind of guy. Mark was three years older than me, so he was really my big brother. I had 11 brothers and there were six girls. So all together, we came from a family of 17 and Mark was my next oldest brother. So we were very close. By the time Mark was about 15, he had left, uh, of course, our house. I remember he joined the NAACP and he would boycott. And then um, he ended up joining the Black Panther Party. The way he joined the Black Panther Party is that a family friend had came from Oakland and they were talking to my older brother, William, about the Black Panther Party. My older brother were not really interested in joining the Black Panther Party, but Mark was. Mark listened to him and he listened to what the program was about and he listened to the 10 point program and he said, yeah, I want to be a part of that. And Mark went back to Oakland. He trained in Oakland. And when he came back, he was all about Black Panther Party. But, uh, uh, as far as him being afraid, he talked about that moment, that if we're going to be soldiers, that, that that go with a part of being a leader. Every great man, Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, or whoever, Stanford Justice, Abraham, Lincoln, whoever, stand for any kind of justice, there's going to be some uh, uh, rebellious attitudes behind, you know, will take place. So he knew that down the line someplace that possibly could happen, but it was no fear. It was not going to alter him from his mission. I, he was not wavering. He saw the goal and he stayed on that task. Another thing I, 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 I got from Mark too was that uh, in the Panthers, he had a saying that the plan only works if you stick to the plan. Mark he had an attitude like like my my daddy. He didn't like that word can't. Mm -hmm. Can't? <laughs> you have you tried. <laughs> my mother had moved to Flint, Michigan after my father died. And I was still living in Peoria, Illinois. Um, she had my oldest brother, William, whom we call brother, drive her down, and she came down from Flint to pick me up. The next day when we were ready to leave, Mark came up and he said, can you drop me off in Chicago? We dropped Mark off on a corner. He got out. He hugged my mother. We all hugged. And me and William, we just kept asking Mark, please, just come on to Flint. William said, come on, man. Uh, you don't need to be here in Chicago. Come on to Flint. You know what I mean? Same thing you can do here, you can do in Flint. And Mark refused. We were real scared for Mark. Two Black Panthers had been killed, and some police officers had been killed, and we were real fearful that Mark, you know, it was just a bad time. Mark said, no, I, I, this is something that I have to do. This is something I've been called to do and I'm gonna stick with it. But one thing about Mark, when he made up his mind, you couldn't forget it. He was very determined to do what he was going to do. He was committed and he went to Chicago to stand by Fred Hampton. Talking about Mark, I can't help but think about Leon Harps. Uh, you can't talk about Mark Clark and I talk about Leon Harps. Uh, after Mark uh, got killed, uh, Leon just lost his mind, lost it totally. He was totally dedicated and committed uh, with Mark and with the mission. Uh, he renamed his son uh, after Mark and his son still lives today. Uh, but Leon was loyal, 
uh, uh, to Mark, uh, to the to the movement. Uh, if somebody would have joined and piggyback with Leon after Mark was deceased, uh, the Panther Party would still be alive and well in period today. But when uh, Mark died uh, and then Leon uh, died, and the, the memory of the Panther Party basically in Peoria, Illinois has died. The thing about Mark is, Mark was raised with the morals of being brought up in the church. He had very good morals, but he also had a very good sense of justice. And so you could actually say Mark was perfect as being the leader of a Black Panther Party. A lot of people don't know this, but Mark was, his title was Defense Captain of the Black Panther Party in Peoria, Illinois. But Mark founded the Black Panther Party in Peoria, Illinois. Mark also started the breakfast program in Peoria, Illinois. Mark was more than just a Black Panther. He was a major player. He was the leader of the Black Panther Party in Peoria, Illinois. And everybody that knew Mark in Peoria respected him. He was a true visionary and leader. Uh, what I got to say about Mark is that Mark didn't take no mess, you know. I mean, he was for real. I remember I uh, went to a meeting with uh, Leroy Smith, the bishop here at the church, and uh, I sat down at the meeting and I was listening to everything that they were talking about. And I sort of was a little tipsy, you know, and uh, they were talking about what they were doing, what that program was about and stuff. And I just told them that wasn't me, you know, that wasn't for me at that time, you know. So Mark told me to get my so-and-so up and get out of there right now. <laughs> but uh, Mark was no joke. Uh, he, was, he was a man's man. I put it that way. I was a captain of communication with Peoria Chapel. I met Mark Clark during a demonstration. Uh, we uh, met a friend of mine. We had started the Black Student Alliance at Central. And Mark heard about it. He about the thing we were doing up at Central in the movement, we were Black Red. And uh, met Mark. And like the things he was saying. Matter of fact, I had knew Mark through Joseph, the whole family before the party, but when we talk about the, the Black Panther party, that was the Mark Clark. <laughs> yes. You know, that was the that was Mark Clark. Man, like I'll tell you, I saw him take a handful of P-Rock and one at a time just boxing somebody hitting it to hit him off like the dude got it got disgusted and just gave up. Couldn't hit him. You know, like I said, Mark, he could have he could have did. Could be a lot of things, but he chose to serve the people. Now that was a true servant, you know. He gave his life. You know, can't give him more than that. He still have a lot of friends now that brags on him. Really, one of the things that they brag about his boxing skills, what kind of people didn't know, he was so fast. He could have went to the Olympics. Mark should have been a boxer. Mark, Mark has fast hands, fast feet, and he was, he, he really could box. You know, I remember one time I saw Mark, I think it was a German Shepherd or a Collie or something. Which, Trying to bite him, and Mark would just kind of brace his foot. I mean, he had one, you know, stand like gonna kick, like a karate kick or something. And every time the dog came at it, he kick him, kick him. I suppose he really was kind of a bold guy, and you know, he, he wasn't afraid of anything. So like Mark was not afraid of anything. So that's how I remember about him. You know, we were all kind of like reserved, but few of the boys around the church, you know, they, they, you know, they seemed to be more uh, outgoing and you know, kind of have, have a tougher interior than we had. I put it that way. Yeah, but yeah, but Mark Mark couldn't move a professional box. Mark didn't want the brothers fighting each other. If he were living today, it wouldn't take place. All the black crime, it hurts my heart to see us brothers fight each other and the mentality that we got. Uh, I went with him on several occasions from here to the tap home. And growing up as a youth, the North End couldn't go on the South End. 
and Mark purposely went down on the big field at the tap home, me and him and uh, Leon Harps and a couple other brothers and let them know that we weren't going to be crossing what he called the, the enemy, crossing by the enemy and fighting each other. And some of the brothers challenged him then, but he stood his ground. Uh, me being a young and always have, did have fear of knowing what I was involved with, it, it took some heart to be in. But Mark never showed any fear at all. So that was a situation I was uh, involved with him in. And there's several others that I was involved with him down to the twilight through on one club. And all of his brothers and his friends was down there drinking like we people usually do, stand the corner. And Mark came up and they felt like when Mark came, it was trouble. And they were telling Mark to get out of there because I'm not going any place. And he was telling about us getting high and drinking and gambling and standing on the corner talking crazy, fighting each other, wasn't gonna have it. And there was a lot of opposition then, a lot of tension then, but still with no fear. His posse was with him. And so several incidents that we were involved in, he was always trying to change and correct things to the positive side. Clark was a visionary. You know, uh, we waited for the time. Uh, wonderful time. Wonderful time. Well, you know, I, you know, I've always been, you know, not a political person, but I thought it wasn't a good move because, you know, at the time, you know, you thought the Black Panther Party was a, a militant organization that was out to destroy, you know. The government and all that, you know, from what you read, you know, the pro pro propaganda, but I guess propaganda, now that you look at it, you know, f 40 years later, you know, I knew that he was, you know, he kind of gotten kind of tired of the way things were going with the system of the government, you know what I mean? And so, you know, I, I didn't talk that many times about it, but but he was, you know, he, he was kind of becoming a kind of a little bit of militant or a little angry over, over what he saw in society. So I guess the, the Panther offered him a, a way to help resolve some issues, you know, and help change some things. It finally got out that worst place, the fifth place in America for black men to live. But we always, we always did say, in P Town, if you play in P Town, you play anywhere. You know, if you survive here, you go in and survive. But we got tired. Got tired of promises. Got tired of uh, threatening to take you down to the river and all that. Uh, we got tired. We, we had enough. This is a lot of things about Mark Clark that we said. Uh, it depends pick on the subject, we could talk about it, but as far as he had the fastest hands I ever seen, the man that could have, like I said, he was a visionary. He could have did, he was smart, uh, athletic. He could have did, could have did anything he wanted to, but he chose, he chose to do what he did. And that was uh, be a bad guy for the people, for the fresh people. That was prejudice. And didn't realize it until I ran into Mark Clark. Because I thought it was a black movement. But he, he soon <laughs> corrected me. Let me know it was a civil rights movement. And, and another thing too, uh, about racism with Mark. And uh, he, we both agreed that the white man, he did create the problem. But it's our problem. It's gonna take us to solve it. Like I said, man was a visionary. So I just sat here and think about it. I think about him. I think of a lot of things that I, I received and things that he had to give up to, that he gave up of himself. One of my most memorable experiences while being in the Black Panther Party was when we took a trip, we carpooled to Chicago for one of our meetings. I remember that Fred Hampton would get up and speak and Mark would get up and speak and other leaders would get up and speak and they would talk about gangs, the gang rivalry. And they said, we're determined to stop gangs from fighting other gangs. We're gonna come together in unity. Well, I remember we were at a school and um, uh, Fred Hampton is my first opportunity to get an opportunity to meet Fred, to, to see the brothers in a soldier type atmosphere with the unity they had. And uh, we went up and uh, we uh, connected with them and we marched and uh, got some information about what they were doing in Chicago chapters. After Mark had joined the Black Panther Party, one of the first things he did is set up the breakfast program for little children, for preschoolers. 
He went around from church to church and he finally found one church that was willing to let him start a breakfast program. It was Ward Chapel Church. It lasted for about a month or two. And then they became very nervous because the FBI was following them and was, you know, police was constantly involved. And so they ended up stopping the breakfast program there. But Mark set up breakfast programs at other various different locations. And so that was the beginning of the breakfast program and what they call WIC now. And the Black Panther Party were starting the breakfast program everywhere they went. And Mark was the one that started the first breakfast program in Peoria, Illinois. I did tell him that, you know, um, if he seen me riding around stuff, they needed a ride up to the grocery store because I knew that they dealt with the Head Start children right there. And they were some of the first ones, the Panthers were the so some of the first ones that first started feeding the children. And I remembered that. And so uh, I thought if I couldn't join them, at least I could help them out doing that. Like I said, he was dead fast. He had a plan with free breakfast program. He did it at War Chapel. But we went around to these stores and he went around and got the food. Yeah. And it went on to open just for uh, people on the South Side through the free breakfast program. And uh, that's when I was introduced to the idea and the realization is of that, like your, your first meal of the day is important. So are your thoughts, you know, and you can't think straight if you're hungry. You know, even Jesus did that. He took care of the human side first, then he took care of your spiritual side. You know, it's a shame that that the kids at Manor High School don't even know who you are. They got and some kids that went to school and they, and their kids ate free breakfast. They don't even know who to thank. Mark grew up in Peoria, Illinois, um, a relative the small community and it's predominantly 50 50 pretty much black and white uh, you saw a lot of discrimination if you were black you experienced discrimination and so um, when we grew up in peoria illinois peoria was a very uh, segregated type of community Pretty much they lived in their area, we lived in our area, and that's the way it was back in the 60s. So Mark was a person who actually saw a lot of, and we all did, we witnessed discrimination. American government decided up. It's not a government anymore, it's a corporation. It's a business. And it's set up for certain people to fail. The same people to see. We were getting ready to this war on drugs. The information that got to us, what was going on with the crack cocaine, and how it got in the community. The black community, we just moved off behind it, so we was rallying there to on the campaign to combat that. And we get down to the other black community. You know, you'd be the spot to be though, man. Back in the day. Back in the day, we was tight. Like that. And urban renewal had just started for the take flight. We were shaking our heads today because we knew urban, all urban renewal was a Trojan horse. You know? I mean, all you get better, probably move from here, move with better out of everything. But you ain't got no vote power. <laughs> That's what they did all over America. That's the part I'm talking about, the American government. You know, and their attentions. But that's what Satan does. See, 
He'll watch you. He'll study you. He can't make you do nothing. But it'll make you so pure. <laughs> so that's it straight to hell. <laughs> One day, Mark came to Joseph and me and asked us if we wanted to join the Black Panther Party. But I didn't know if I really wanted to join. And Mark said something very profound to us. He said, there are some people that will talk about injustice. And there are some people that's willing to do something about it. Which one are you? So we joined the Black Panther Party. We walked around the, news, the neighborhood and we sold Black Panther newspapers. We stood on the corner, passed them out. And really, to my surprise, hundreds of people bought the newspaper. They wanted to know what was going on. And they wanted to know about the injustices and how and what was taking place in Peoria and around the world in the 60s. Defense Captain Mark Clark of Peoria, Illinois, and Chairman Fred Hampton of Chicago, Illinois, of the Black Panther Party, were both just exceptional people. They were dedicated to their cause, and they were willing to die for their cause. And you don't find people like that very often. Mark was such a special person to me. Mark was really more than a brother, because Mark was my friend. And if you knew Mark, you had a friend, because he was that kind of person. Mark taught me about life. He taught me about compassion. He taught me about fairness. So when Mark died, I was totally devastated. In fact, I really didn't want to speak on it for probably 30 years. And one day I finally sat down and I wrote a narrative about Mark but it really took me a long time to be able to even do that. Mark is greatly missed and greatly loved, and we will never forget him. And we will never forget the contribution that Mark Clark, Defense Captain Mark Clark, and Chairman Fred Hampton made for civil rights. Thank you.